This is the uh, microphone that came with it, KG7 HR. Uh, okay, now that's not too bad. Now try some of those settings again. The, you know, one, two, three, four. Go through those settings again with that mic. Okay, and I do have the processor on though, so I am probably should turn that off. Yeah, turn the processor off. Okay, so that's what the processor off button on number three. And then we'll go over here to four. But what I'm seeing is I'm seeing like very little transmitted signal output. Like I'd have to whistle into it. it just like there's like a little uh, bit of S meter movement, very little. Well, four isn't too bad. Yeah, I just don't understand why there's it's not making any kind of power. Maybe it needs more gain to try to uh, put the microphone gain up. Okay, well that uh, right there shows. It seems to be really sensitive. You have like actually have to talk like really close or right into it. I don't know what's the gain at now. Uh, well, how about that's at three o'clock? So I mean, I had it at twelve. That's actually better. I wonder what, why you would have to run it that high. Okay, and then I could hear uh, there that the microphone was definitely picking up something. KG seven H R. So I, I I don't know if that sounds any good or not. Well, it's better than when you were starting out. I mean, uh, it's moving in the right direction. I, I'm sure you can probably improve it. Okay, and then that's with it just off, and it's to me I think that sounds better. And I see that it's like, bam, it's really putting out some uh, modulation. That does sound better. What is you where, where are you at now? Number four? I just off completely off. What uh, equalization is off? Yeah, yeah, nothing on. Now, yeah, that does sound better. How's the power output? That was good. It's normal, like one of the, but in the other ones, it's not normal. I don't understand that. Well, it, 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 it must have something to do with the gain and, and everything, but um, I don't know. I don't know anything about the 920. I don't either. I mean, the menu system is extremely familiar to the, the 1000 uh, MP that I had. Yeah, I mean, so right now you sound the best that you have since you started. Right, but it's probably not all that great of a sounding radio then. It's not that bad. It's, it's off frequency. Right now I'm on uh, um, the 3.852.6. Or, uh, or uh, something like that. Oh, so it needs an alignment? Yeah. And um, I'm just going to leave it on for a while because it, I don't know how long it's been. It's actually very, very dirty, but not like, it's just like dusty. So that's a lot of driving to do. So I'm on 3.852.96. You're pretty close. I'm on 53.000. Does it, does it sound like I'm um, where I should be? You just sound off a little. I wonder if I can, uh, let me see if I can fine tune it. Hold on. Uh, no, I did talk to Clark earlier before my tooth really started kicking my butt, and uh, he got this uh, fancy equalizer thing, and um, but we were trying to just even make this thing sound okay, and then he had to go eat or something. I can't remember. I wonder if I just adjust my clarifier. That might be the easiest thing to do. Yeah, you're not too bad. I mean, you know, it's workable. Okay, so this is 3.852.97. Uh, it just sounds a little bit, just a little bit off. Okay, but, and this is definitely off, I know that, because I can hear it, so, but you, just to show you, that's actually 3.53, or whatever, 3.853. That actually sounded better to me. That's interesting. Um... I don't know, it isn't, uh, it's kind of warbly sounding to me on the other radio. Well, I don't know, okay, well, I don't know what to 
You think so? You think this sounds like it's on frequency? It sounded so far tonight. Okay, well maybe it's not off frequency. Maybe it's just some other uh, artifact in the audio. I'd have to hear it some more. Um, I mean, Siri, are you on? He, he has a better ear than I do. He has a discriminating ear. Discriminating ear. A very good one. Yeah, it's kind of a cool radio. I mean, it looks like the, uh, it looks a lot like the uh, 1000 with this funny little swoosh underneath the VFO. I don't know why they did that. It kind of reminds me of the cars from the time period. Well, nice as they got to meet you Yeah, well, that, uh, that's a whole different radio, and, and that one doesn't have anything wrong with it, as far as I know. This has got a secret switch on the bottom, and I don't know what it's for. I think it might have a clear speech uh, thing installed in it, maybe. I don't know. I haven't, uh, I was in so much pain, and I was very curious, but I just was too much pain to just take the cover off of it. But, um, you really think that sounds like it's on frequency? It's off a little bit now. I, I, it, it seems like it's off a little bit. Okay, so then right there might be really close. Yes. And then it was like, it, I need to split hairs in between uh, 9 5 and 9 6. And it doesn't, I don't know if it lets me do that. I'm like, I can't see a third digit. It won't, it's not showing it, you know? Well, I don't know. I wonder if that's what my uh, 1518 sounded like. Yeah, it was like, it was like you couldn't quite get it where you wanted it, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's how mine was, too. I mean, it would warm up. And it, this is what sucks about, like, this is a, a nice radio, you know, I mean, really it is, but, I mean, I, I think it's from about 2003, and it's like, it's not, it, why is it off frequency, you know what I mean, why, why are these radios, like, aging, and then yet other radios, you know, don't? I don't know. Yeah, I always hate doing that though. You know, because that means that there's something in the radio has aged. And there's a way to adjust it also in the radio so that you don't have to do it from the service menu. But what's nice about the ability to do it in the service menu is you can adjust it though without opening it. Menu. Yeah, and so it's compensating for a, a problem in the hardware, really. Now, from my understanding, I think a lot of these radios at the factory they adjust them as closely as possible, and then they, and before the radio is done, they go through the service menu and they adjust it just a little bit on every single band. And so in the service menu on every single band, the adjustments will be different from one radio to the next just because of variances in components. You must be tired from all that driving. It wasn't too bad because um, yesterday, um, I'm not sure what time we left, and it was really good uh, for stargazing until the damn moon came up and wiped everything out. So, yeah, well, you could look out the window. She was looking out the window. She said, I can see Andromeda. I can see the Pleiades. I can see, you know, all that, the Orion Nebula. And so we, we pulled over near uh, that Shell gas station in uh, Seligman and took some pictures and stuff. And then we went up and met the guy for the radio. By that time, the moon was up too high, you know. Um, but that spot there is really good for viewing uh, the stars and stuff. And I, I grabbed a small telescope. It's called a... Um, uh, yeah, a Celestron travel scope. It's just an 80 millimeter short focal length uh, fits in a backpack and uh, we didn't even bother. We're just like, yeah. So I didn't realize you could see the Andromeda galaxy with your naked eye? Yeah, when you're up there, you can definitely see it and, you know, I mean, but you can't when it's a full moon. So what is the Andromeda galaxy? Was it on the horizon? Yeah, so, um, 
Uh, it was up towards the direction of Kingman, I think, if I recall. So the Andromeda Galaxy is the closest galaxy to us, and it's 2.5 million light years away. I don't know how you remember that stuff. I don't know. I got a good brain for that kind of stuff. I don't know why. But, uh, and that's the closest galaxy. Can you imagine that? Yep. That's why I love talking to you. You just you always know these things, and you, like my my wife's the same way. She like you could point this stuff, and she remembers like uh, you you know like I can't remember what star that is, or oh, is that Jupiter, is that Mercury, is that Venus? You know, and it's like uh, you're like her. You, you just remember these things, like how many miles this is and that is. together I would guess right yeah. or we hope right we won't be here when that happens no yeah that's a lot of things I think what uh, the main things we need to worry about are probably nothing to do with any of that but the Andromeda galaxy is supposedly bigger than it yeah I imagine it probably is but, I mean, we have no concept of being able to even really judge that stuff, you know? I mean, it's really, there were a lot of speculation. You mean no uh, way to judge it? Well, you and I, when we're just looking. Supposedly, scientists can measure it based on certain things, you know? Right. But, I mean, they too could be wrong also. You know, I mean, they know what the diameter of our galaxy, so I don't know how they figure that out, you know? So, like, like we're like 26,000 light years, I think various estimates, 30, between 26 and 30,000 light years from the galactic center. I think just, you know, the, the lizard people told them, you know, so that's how they know. Okay, uh, what, what's it called? Not a, a belt, but uh, like a disc. Yeah, the aliens from Butez told them. I guess, I don't know. Well, you, you know that, uh, what is it, Gobekli Tepe? Yeah, that's in Turkey. That is such an interesting uh, thing. And listening to people's interpretations of what it means and stuff like that. And, but they, they can tell by looking at it that those people knew very precise things about the galaxy back then. So how did they know that? I don't know, and I, I have my theories, but, you know, I mean, it's just rather just speculation without really any kind of proof. It's like, hey, well, this would make a great tabloid story. Yeah, okay. But I think there was some interaction from somebody from somewhere else, you know. I, I really don't think it, I, and I think that also the other thing it points out is that humans have probably had advanced civilizations long before... Uh, where we're at now, we might have been way ahead of where we're at right now, but it, you know, it, it got destroyed and there's no evidence of it existing because they say it doesn't take very long to, to hide the history of anything, you know? No, oh, that's very true. Let's just stand by and see if anyone else is here. Yeah, I heard you and Alex when I was driving to Seligman uh, last night in the truck. I could hear you guys. I couldn't hear anybody else. I don't know who it was all on. Uh, Dave, AI7R was on. I might have been hearing him, actually, yeah. I, I, I heard Alex strong. But I can't, I can't drive around with that other... Uh, that uh, thing at uh, 60 miles an hour, so I just had this uh, CB antenna hooked up. Oh yeah. I need to I need to rig up something in the back of the bed of the truck to where I can have the HF antenna back there. Right. Then I can be like, hey, hey David, I'm over at Walmart. With my uh, chocolate. That's right. I was on 
115 meters again. I told you that my 160 meter antennas were working on 15 meters, so that was the uh, CQ winter field day today. I got one contact last night, um, uh, late at night. I don't know, like uh, 12 in the m 12 or 1 in the morning. It was in Utah, and he was uh, doing field day. Yeah, they called it winter field day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess they were busy at the Jeep Posse building today. Were oh, they doing that? Yeah, they're doing it like an open house and a winter field day over there. Oh, cool. Yeah, so when they were doing the uh, CQ North America thing last weekend, some guys around here were telling me, hey, you should come up here. They're going to do an open house. I'm like, no, I'm good. You know, I mean, I think that's really for, like, people that, um, you know, uh, want to see stuff. And also, like, I think it's cool for people that don't have a station to operate. They can go there and operate it, you know? Well, that's it exactly, because I know there's a lot of hands around who either can't afford a station or whatever. And so they can go there and, uh, you know, operate. Yeah, and I definitely don't want to take that away from somebody that I can't afford to operate when I've got... My, my cup is running over, you know what I mean? Oh, good for you. Good evening. Hey, Rich. Hey, howdy. We're just uh, testing that Bram has got this other radio he picked up yesterday, and we're trying to test the audio to see how it sounds. Oh, very good. Does it, does it sound bad, Rich? Yeah, it doesn't sound as good as you have been. I can say that, I think. Yeah, I think it's a combination of things, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's, it's not on frequency. I know that. No, what? It's not on frequency. I've got it adjusted. To uh, eight five two point nine five, and that was like the best I could get it. What kind of radio is it, bro? It's a Yaesu that kind of looks like the one thousand. It's a FT nine twenty. I think it's from about two thousand three, so it's fairly old. Okay. I got it because it's a big, huge radio, you know. Oh yeah. Does it have the built-in power supply? No, it doesn't. It does. It does. It does have dual receivers. I think uh, it's got that. It, it's got that um, second VFO knob, and then it's got like that big giant VFO slope, high cut, low cut. It it just kind of looks kind of like a weird 1000 MP. It has a dual receiver. Yeah, it does. Well, that's interesting. And then it's got that shuttle jog around the main VFO like they have on the on the new 101 and the old. Uh, 1000s. Yeah, it's, it's called a shuttle jog. I don't know what that is. It's like another small ring and behind the main VFO, and you can tune it to jump through the bands. Okay, I never saw that. I don't know what that is. I mean, you explained it to me, but I've never seen it. Uh, it will tune really fast, or you can adjust how it's set. So, like on Rich's radio, um, there's another knob behind the main knob. I'm not sure. What does it do on yours, uh, Rich? Is it does it go through the uh, control the other VFO? There's a lot. My dual uh, receivers. You're asking what? There, there's the uh, like the ring behind the main VFO. Is it the main VFO? Is that what you're asking me? Yeah. Well, there's like a there's a, the main knob on the on the um, the 101, and there's like a, a shuttle jog ring behind it, right? Yes. And that controls the other VFO, or does it do something different? It does something different, actually. Yeah, that's what this one has, and it this one will like start scanning through the band really fast, or something. If you turn it one way or the other. Yeah. So I guess Greg, that's one thing I can count on these the 710. It's going to be right on the frequency, right? Yeah, it, yeah, it, it just, uh, it seems like, I don't know why this, these radios, I mean, I've had radios that are way older than this that were not off frequency at all. I mean, even my Kenwood 940 isn't off this much. Did he give you the manual with the radio? 
Yeah, yeah. So I got um, a really weird power cord that has like four wires on it, and the, the dirty microphone, and a beat up manual. Yeah, so it's the same as the one that you gave me, and I had to, um, that one I've been having to fiddle with it, um, the, the RJ45 connection was kind of funky and it doesn't like something in the microphone, I did get that one to work. Oh, okay, how does that one sound? About like all of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm on a, a, a 920 Yaesu FT920. It's off frequency. I've got it adjusted as close as I can get it. Well, it was $200, and I, you don't look a gifted horse in the mouth, you know? But it was um, a kind of a fiasco to get it, but... <clears throat> yeah, I knew for two hundred dollars it would probably be some uh, some reason why it was two hundred dollars. Just besides the fact that it's you know older. There, um, Alex, uh, Rich is on too. Uh, Rich. Yeah. No, you're Rich. He must have stepped away for a minute. Anyway, KD 60 so we have about 10 more. We're just getting up 10 meters, but on there, it's what, 4.30 or maybe, I don't know, after the first 10 minutes of the football game. Were they doing a uh, winter field day? No, no, I don't. Well, I only talked into that. That's correct. I don't know. But not, I, don't, I don't talk to the United States. I, I'm not hearing international guys doing it. Yeah, I got Venezuela in the mobile right as I was getting home. Okay. Up in there. It was like uh, um, Yankee Victor 5, Yankee Victor or something. I don't get too excited about it at home, but I really enjoy it when I'm mobile. I think it's fun. I enjoy it because I got the five on the Yagi. I bet you do. I don't turn on the amp on 10 meters if I don't have to. I mean, you know, there's no point in doing it. Where'd you go, Rich? Uh, I did meet a new person at all today. That was kind of cool. You met a new person where? In Australia. Oh, good. In which part of Australia? He's uh, in. Uh, oh, boy. J I N D A D Y N. Basically, he's right by almost the largest mountain. Thank 
group that comes in every night. Oh, 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 oh.